Hello again from Digicore Things. Following on from my minimalist Europe card bus backplane design and build, let's take a look at a simple prototype card. It seems logical to start with a prototype card, as this can form the basis for prototyping designs for other cards. In addition, it's a simple way to expose the bus connector signals via a pin header for general testing or bus monitoring. The prototype card can be used in the horizontal position via the backplane's right angle connector to assist with access during prototyping. It could, of course, just be plugged into any backplane slot as with any other pre-designed MECB card. Again, the prototype card design started by creating a new KiCad project based on the MECB standardized mechanical specification KiCad template that I'd created earlier. There was an initial thought that I'd keep the ATF16V8 address decoding GlueLogic PLD that I'd included in the KiCad template. However, I decided to follow the KISS principle and keep it simple for the first prototype card design. I can always create a second prototype card design later if it's decided that having the standard PLD included on the card would be beneficial. Instead, my first prototype card will maximize the space available for a perf board grid of holes for free use. So with that in mind, let's summarize the design parameters. All dimensions and corner mounting holes are as per the MECB standardized board mechanical specification. A 64 pin header, clearly labelled with the A and C rows and pins 1 to 32 for ease of access to all bus signals. Power bus bars along the two sides of the card to distribute the plus 5 volts and ground power connections. All remaining board space, with the exception of mounting hole clearance, to be utilised for free use through hole pads in a 0.1 inch perf board style grid. And a few design notes. The header pins are positioned directly alongside the DIN connector mounting holes with 0.1 inch spacing to maximise available prototype grid area. The bus connector pin numbers only are labelled on the silk screen as labelling with the actual signal names would consume available grid space. Right, so let's start off by creating a new KiCad project from the standard template. So I'll go File, New Project from Template, User Template, Minimalist ECB. OK. And we'll call it MECB underscore prototype. Save. Now I open the schematic. OK, with the schematic open, we'll delete the glue logic PLD as we're not going to include that in our first prototype card design. So I'll select that and hit delete. Then in the tools menu, we can update PCB from schematic you notice there's an F8 hotkey as well. And with the update PCB dialog we can just leave the defaults and select update PCB and close. That's deleted the PLD from the PCB but we still have all the tracks that were routed to the PLD so if we then use the selection filter to select only the tracks, we can then highlight all the tracks and hit delete to remove them. And we're now ready to create a new schematic and PCB based on the standard template with our PLD device. So let's now fast forward to the final schematic. OK, so on the final schematic, you can see that I've had to fully label all 64 bus connector pins as we want to bring out all pins to the prototype board, even though for the minimalist Europe guard bus we are only using a subset of the ECB signals. 
we then have a two row by 32 pin header which is simply linked one to one to the 64 pin DIN connectors A and C rows. Finally, I've just used a couple of standard 2x2 connector symbols which I've then associated with custom footprints for the main grid and for the two power bus bars running along each side of the board. You can see I've also updated the description panel just to complete the schematic. OK, let's take a look at the final PCB layout. So, as you can see, the two row 32 pin header strip is positioned directly alongside the DIN connector and the prototyping grid area is maximised. And we also have the ground and 5 volt power bars along the top and bottom edges of the board layout. Finally, if I zoom in, you can see the header pin labelling fits efficiently between the grid holes without consuming any grid space. The labelling is repeated on both sides of the PCB. So let's have a quick look at the 3D viewer. And we can see how the finished board will look. OK, so here are my first prototype card PCBs delivered from JLC PCB. Let's have a look at one. They look really nice. Now those of you with sharp eyes might notice that the two mounting holes on the DIN connector side are missing from these boards. The reason for this is that I actually initially designed and ordered these particular boards at the same time I was finalising the standard board mechanical specification and creating the KiCad template. Not an issue though for my first five prototype boards as the missing holes are the only difference, everything else is to the standard specification. If anything, this just highlights the importance of having a KiCad template available for the standard design, so little details like this shouldn't be missed on any future card designs. So let's get this assembled, which is quite straightforward as we simply have the header pins and a right angle male DIN connector to mount. So I don't have any uh, 32 by 2 pin header strips, so I'm just going to use these commonly available 40 uh, single water line strips. So to use these I'll need to chop off 8 from the end of each one. To give me 2 strips of 32. Right, so let's fit those. Make sure I've got the board around the right way. So that's the top of the board. Put that in row C and the other one in row A. Right, let's get those tacked in place. I'll just stand the other end up to get it at the right angle. Grab my soldering iron. Right, they look reasonably straight. So let's uh, get them sold in place.
Okay, with the pin headers fitted, um, it just leaves the right angle DIN connector. Now there's a couple more items I'll need. To attach the DIN connector, I need two M2.5 nuts. And two M two point five by ten millimeter bolts. Okay, let's get this right angle connector fitted. Um, just fits nicely in there. And the hex nuts go on the top and the bolts through the bottom. You get a screwdriver. And the nuts just lock in place, which is quite convenient. So let's put the bolt on the other end. Uh, I'll set the nut on top, put the bolt through the bottom, and screw that one up as well. Right. Now we just need to solder that in. I won't need to tack that in place because the bolts are holding it in place. So let's get that soldered. Well, that looks great. Okay, I've just added um, a couple of PCB standoffs to support the card when it's plugged into the horizontal right angle backplane connector. Same standoffs I used for the black plane. Let's grab those. Get rid of these offcuts. Normally I'd be fitting four standoffs, but as I mentioned earlier, I'd overlooked those two DIN connector side mounting holes on these pre-ordered PCBs. So let's plug this into the backplane to see how it looks. All ready for some prototyping or board testing. A nice robust connection. For now, we can use this setup for initial test of the backplane power. So I'll just hook up my power supply and my meter, then a quick test of the power switch. Some USB C power. And 
and I'll hook up my meter. So ground is on this side. It's pin 32, uh, either the A or C row, both are connected to ground, and the 5 volts is the A and C row of pin 1. Okay, Let's turn on the meter. Right, let's hit the power switch. And we have 5.2 volts, which is fine. I should also mention the appeal of adding the USB-C power option. Thanks to the Raspberry Pi 4, you can now pick up a 5 volt 3 amp USB-C power supply very cheaply. This official Raspberry Pi 15 watt USB-C power supply was only $8. Next, we'll take a look at our first functional MECB card, but until then, power off. While we're here, it'd also be fun to see what the board looks like, uh, plugged into one of the regular vertical sockets. So, if we plug them in, let's plug them into slot 3. Nice, robust connection. That's it. Thanks for watching.